Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rekakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let I get out there pushing this word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah has created us to do so he can wake up and seal the elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, and you Israelites who are scattered amongst the heathen nations that may look like the heathen nations, but your father's seed line goes back to you being the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American, one of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel, and Shalom. It's your brother Halak here from the GMS Denver camp, coming back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah with another video. And this is going to be another installment or another part to uh, uh, the true narrative of the Holy Bible. You see, in this series, what I'm doing is going back and chronicle, chronicle, chronicling the, the, the history, you see, and the relationship the Most High has established, established between our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? So this is going to be the, the fifth part, if I'm not mistaken, the fourth or fifth part. <laughs> and we went through the history to show you <clears throat> how the Most High made a relationship with Abraham, how he made one with Isaac, how he made one with Jacob. And now we're going to get into the children of Israel, the, the seed of Jacob. You see, we're going to start right here in Exodus 2. We're not going to read a whole bunch of Exodus. I'm going to feel, I'll pull a few points. You can go back and read the history on your own, but I just want to pull out some major points uh, or some major, some major things that were stated. You see, and then it's going to lead us into going into uh, all the prophecies of the Most High promising to fulfill the oaths that he made unto our forefathers. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Christian church has pushed this false narrative of the Bible being for everybody, that God loves everybody, that the God of the Bible is the God of all people, and that's not true. <laughs> when you go into the true narrative of the Bible, hey, everything the Christian church is saying is completely false. And we're going to show you this as we continue to uh, go through this history, man. So we're going to go to Exodus 2, and we'll start at 23. It says what? And it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto the Most High by reason of the bondage. So this is going into what? Our forefathers went down into Egypt after Joseph was there. You see, he had to uh, basically establish Egypt as a superpower. Then our forefathers went into Egypt to sojourn and live there uh, for a period of time. Then a new Pharaoh came up, and they began to oppress us. And Jake began to sigh and to cry. And the Most High heard us, man. You see? Verse 24 goes on to say what? And the Most High heard their groaning. And the Most High remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. You see that? Those are the fathers of the promise. That's who everything runs through. And, it, and, it, and, and, and the lot falls upon who? The 12 tribes of Israel, man, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see that? Verse 25 says what? And the Most High looked upon the children of Israel, and the Most High had respect unto them. Move to the next chapter. Now, verse 1 says what? Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mount of the Most High, even to Horeb. Verse 2. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Yup. And, 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 and how it was written in the, uh, in the 1611 version, that, that word angel, the A is capitalized. So that lets us know that this is Yahweh Shah speaking unto our, our forefather Moses. You see? This is Yahweh Shah speaking unto Moses. That, that angel that was speaking unto uh, Moses was, was Yahweh Shah. Verse 3 goes on to say, And Moses said, I will not turn aside and see this great sight while the bush is not burnt. And when Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah saw that he turned aside to see, the Most High called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father. Now listen to this. Now let's see if the Most High says, 
Let's see what the Most High says after he makes that statement. He says, I'm the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. <laughs> so that, that cuts any notion, that destroys any notion that the God of the Bible loves all people. Right here in Exodus 3 and 6, the Most High is telling us that he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <clears throat> the God of the Holy Bible is only the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? Point blank period. God does not love all nations. He's not dealing with all nations. He's only dealing with the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. Something that you will never be told in the Christian church. Verse 7 says what? And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people. I have surely seen the affliction of my people. My people means it's a, a, a possessive. It's, it's possessive, man. Meaning the, the children of Israel belong unto who? The Most High. That's who the Most High's people is. All people are not the Most High's people. And the Most High is letting be known right here in Exodus 3. It goes on to saying, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people, which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. And that, going, and that goes into what? The land that he promised unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the land of Canaan. When you go back to the, the first couple of parts of this uh, this this series, we went into the history how the Most High told Abraham that what? This land that you have been sojourning in, walking up and down in, I'm going to give this land unto you for an inheritance and to your seed after you. And the land was passed down from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob, now to the twelve tribes of Israel. That's the land that the Most High is promising to bring the Israelites into. You see, the best land in the earth, that land of Canaan, right there in the Levant, man. That's the land of the Israelites. That land, that land belongs unto us. Verse 9 goes on to say what? Now therefore, behold, the crowd of the children of Israel has come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Verse 10 says what? Now, th Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. You see? The Most High is making it clear that his people are the children of Israel, and that doesn't change. That has never changed. And let's prove that point real quick. This is uh, Malachi 3 and 6. It says what? For I am Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You see that? The Most High never changes. We were the Most High's people back then. We're still the Most High's people now. The Most High was the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob back then. He's still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob till this day. He does not change. You see? But let the Christians tell you. You see, let the Christians tell it. Oh, God loves everybody now. God is the God of all people now. No, he's not. You see? Christianity, they preach false doctrine. They're preaching a false narrative. What they're preaching, it doesn't add up to what the scriptures say. Point blank, period. You see? Now we're going to continue on. We're going to read, uh, read uh, down to verse 15. Verse 15 says, Verse 15, then we're going to read down to 15, then we're going to jump to 18. So it says, What? And Moses said unto the Most High, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token un unto thee, that I have that I have sent thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people of the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve the Most High upon this mountain. And Moses said unto the Most High, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, the God of your fathers, you see, the God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? 
And the Most High said unto Moses, I am that I am. You see, and when you go into the trans uh, translation, it goes into Yahweh. You see? Because if Moses went to the Israelites to tell the Most High's name, he wouldn't come and say that I am sent him. He, he would say what? He is sent me. Yahweh. That's the Heavenly Father's name. Yahweh is the Most High's name. That's who sent Moses to retrieve the children of Israel. Not no damn Ahia, man. That's BS. You see, and to further back that up, you can go to Judah's name. Because the Most High's name is in Judah. If the Most High's name was uh, Ahia, Judah's name will be ah ah Ahiada, I guess. <laughs> you see? But in the Hebrew, Judah's name is what? Yahweh, duh. Which means Yahweh thinks. You see that? Now it goes on to say, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. And the Most High said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The God of Yahweh, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto all generations. See, the Most High, his name has never changed, man. And we have received that name here in the end of the age, man. Generations later. That hey, we have been brought back into remembrance of the name of the Heavenly Father and the name of his only begotten Son, which is Yahweh Shah. You see? Uh, verse 16 says what? Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, Yahweh, God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done unto you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Fulfilling what? Fulfilling the promise that the Most High made unto our forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob of what? Of giving that land unto them and to their seed after them. This is what the Most High is doing right here. He's still keeping his oaths and his promises that he made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. The Most High hasn't changed. You see? Verse 18 says what? And they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt, and ye shall, and ye shall say unto him, Yahweh, God of the Hebrews, you see that? Yahweh, God of the Hebrews, have met with us, and now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahweh our power. You see? This is the most I still what? Fulfilling his oaths and his promises that he made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all the way back in Genesis, man. You see? So, then you go into the, then as you continue on, you go into what happened in Egypt, all the plagues, the most I sent upon Egypt, and eventually what? The most I saved us from Egypt. Now I want to fast forward to Exodus 24. Now, we've been saved out of Egypt, and now we're in the wilderness. You see? And as we're in the wilderness, an event takes place. A covenant is made between the Most High and the Israelites. You see? And that event, take, and that event, take, and that event takes place here in Exodus 24. And this is another cut to you Christians talking about oh, all people are under the covenants. No. You had a Christian from a, a, I can't remember what organization he was from, talking about how all of, of mankind transgressed the Most High Covenant. No, that's not true. Because all mankind was not brought up under the first covenant with the Most High. Only the Israelites were. But that's that Christian doctrine, man. That universalism. And, and that's not according to the Bible. The first covenant was made with the Israelites, and hey, between the Most High and the Israelites in the in the wilderness, and it was mediated by Moses. And we're about to get into it. So this is Exodus 24. And 3, it says what? And Moses came and told the people all the words of Yahweh. And all the judgments and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which Yahweh have said we will do. 
You see, because what Moses is is uh, reciting to them the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, the laws, statutes, and commandments, saying that every and now we're making a verbal agreement that what everything the Most High said to do, we're gonna do it. You see, this only took place with the Israelites. This only took place with the Most High's chosen people. This only took place with the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Verse 4 says what? And Moses wrote all the words of Yahweh, and rose up early in the morning, and built an altar under the hill, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. So it's a whole ceremony going on right now. You see? That's what's being prepared. A sacrifice is being prepared to be made to who? The Heavenly Father Yahweh to do what? To seal the covenant. You see? To seal the agreement between the Most High and the Israelites. And the Israelites only. As it is written. Verse 5 goes on to say, it says what? And he sent young men of the children of Israel, which offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen unto Yahweh. So we made sacrifices unto the Most High. We made sacrifices unto the God of our fathers. Then what took place next? Verse 6 tells us, And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And Verse 7, And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people. And they said, All that Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh shall have said, we will do, and be obedient. You see that? There we go again, making that verbal agreement with the Most High that we're going to keep His covenant, that we're going to walk in His ways. You see? Only the Israelites done this, man. So all you Christians talking about, oh, uh, uh, all nations are sinners and everybody broke the Most High's first covenant, that's a lie. This covenant has only been established between the Most High and the Israelites, as we we're reading. You see? So Exodus 24 and 7 says what? And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people and said, All that Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shall have said we will do and be obedient. You, you hear it? Verse 8 says what? And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which Yahweh Bashim Yahweh shall have made with you concerning all these words. You hear that? There it is. The covenant that was established between the Most High and the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, man. You see? That the Most High is going to be our God and we're going to be his people. That's what, hey, that's what we agreed to. He had stipulations that we had to follow. He had uh, guidelines set, up, set out for us to follow. And we, and we made an agreement and, and said what? That we were going to keep it. You see? And we know eventually... <laughs> The covenant was broken, right? Now, we want to jump to uh, Leviticus. You see, which is the book of the law, right? So, when you go into Leviticus, let's see if I can find it real quick. I think it's uh, chapter 26, if I'm mistaken. So, yeah, uh, let me see. Yeah, so Leviticus 26 is another version of the curses, I mean the blessings and the curses. As you can see, it, it tells you right there. The uh, uh, precept to it is Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 68, which is the blessing and the curses. So Leviticus is another form of that, you see? That's that's what the Most High told us before he told us what he told us in Deuteronomy 28. Now, with this covenant, man, it's, it's basically a contract between the Most High and the Israelites, right? So, the Most High promised uh, promise that if we kept it, he would bless us. But if we broke that covenant, he would curse us. And that's what we did because what? Jake is hard-headed and they wanted to do their own thing. Event, uh, and that's what happened. So, we fell up under the curses. Now, when you jump down to the 40th verse in this, because he tells us, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, about the curses and what would happen if, uh, if we broke his covenant. Now, I want you to listen to this. This is something the most I promised to do for the Israelites, right? Even though we had broke the covenant. So this is Leviticus 26 and 40. It says what? If they shall confess their iniquity 
and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespasses which they trespassed against me and that also they have walked contrary unto me and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have bought them into the land of their enemies you see and why, and why would we be bought into the land of our enemies because we broke that first covenant and that's a part of the curses being scattered all throughout the world you see enslaved and being oppressed by the heathen nations that's a part of the curse for us <laughs> you see but the most High is telling us if we confess our faults you see and the faults of our fathers and basically he's telling us if, if we repent he will have mercy upon us even though we sinned against him man because it goes and says, says what if then the uncircumcised hearts be humbled and they accept, and they then accept of their punishment of the punishment of their iniquity then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land do you see it so the most I is telling you that if his people repent and turn back unto him He's going to remember his covenant. And that's what you see happening. Now it's only ordained for the remnant of Israel to return. According to Isaiah chapter 10. You see. But the Most High is going to remember his covenant man. This is why you see the Israelites waking up all over the world. And proclaiming that they are the Israelites. Proclaiming that the Heavenly Father. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is our God. This is why you see us calling upon the name of Yahweh Shah. The true Messiah, man. Because the Most High is remembering us. And he's bringing us back into remembrance of, of, of what's true. He's bringing us back into remembrance of, of who our forefathers are, man. Because he's preparing to take us back into the land that he promised unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to fulfill that oath that he made with Abraham so long ago, man. You see? This is what's taking place right now. This is why you see the events taking place in the earth the way they're taking place. This is why the Israelites are proclaiming that they're the Israelites again. Because the Most High is remembering his oaths. You see? These Christians and, and, and wanna wanna act as if this is some, you know what I'm saying, some random phenomenon. No. This is but this is biblical prophecy. This is what the most I said would happen in the last days, man. So it goes on to say, the land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them. And they shall and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes, and, and, and because of that we broke the covenant. Right? So he punished us. Now, 44 tells you what? And yet, for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly and to break my covenant with them. For I am Yahweh their God. So even though we sin and transgress against the Most High, He's telling us that what? He's not going to cast us away. He's not going to abhor us to destroy us utterly. Now, two-thirds of our people are going to be destroyed. But guess what? The remnant, the, the, the uh, nation of Israel is going to be bought back through the remnant of the nation of Israel. Those who have been ordained to be saved. To keep our nation going, man. The Most High is letting you know right here that he's not going to break his covenant with us, man. But to let the Christians tell it. The Most High has completely done away with the Israelites. When, it, when, it, when the Bible tells you right here that that's not the case. Once again, what you have been learning in these Christian churches is all lies, man. It doesn't add up to what the scriptures say. It doesn't add up to what the Most High said, man. Because at the end of the day, these are the words of the Heavenly Father. You see? So Leviticus 26 and 44, one more time. And yet for all that... When they be in the land of their enemies, which we are right now, I will not cast them away. And this is why you see us standing upon our feet once again, man. Acknowledging our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, 
and his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, and also acknowledging the fact that we are what? That we are the Israelites, the physical bloodline, uh, 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 the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. This is showing us that what? The Most High has not cast us away. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them, to destroy them utterly, and to break my covenant with them, for I am Yahweh their power. You hear that? Even though the Most High punished us, He's still our God. He still, he still rules over us. You see? But 45 says what? But but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors. You see that? Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am Yahweh. You hear that? And the Most High still has to fulfill this because what? We're still in the land of our enemies. We're not in the land that the Most High promised us to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You see? Verse 46 says what? These are the statutes and judgments and laws which Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah made between him and the children of Israel and Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Do you see it? And the most I say, he's not going to forsake us, man. He's not going to forsake, because that will what? That will cause the Most High to have to break his covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we know the Most High is not going to do that. When the Most High promised and swore on himself that he was going to fulfill the promises made unto Abraham, man. You see? So I'm going to get one prophecy. Then the next couple parts is just me going to, it's just me going to uh, be going to uh, pull prophecies on how the Most High is speaking through the mouth of the prophets, how he's going to fulfill all the promises he made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. You see? Matter of fact, before I get that one, let's get this in uh, Psalms, Psalms 105 real quick. Listen to this. Psalms 105 and 6 says what? O ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is Yahweh, our power. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant and everlasting means unending, man. And what is the covenant? Verse 11 says what? Saying unto thee, I will give the land of, I will, it's like, it's like it. saying unto thee, will I give the land of Canaan? The lot of your inheritance. You see that? And that fulfills what? And that's going to fulfill what? The promise that he made unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. With a, which promise hasn't been fulfilled. You see? That promise has, hasn't been fulfilled yet. We're still waiting. We, we, they, hey, we as the Israelites are still waiting for this to come to pass. You see? And that's why the Most High is waking us up in this last day because he's preparing to do what? To deliver us and to take us back into the land as he's promised. Now, this is one of my favorite ones to go into because it's just straight to the point. Baruch chapter 2. Like I say, the next couple of videos is, is going to be me going into prophecy, prophecy of the Most High promising to save the Israelites from the land of the enemies to take them back into the land as he's promised to do. This is, the, this is what the Christians don't talk about, man. The Christians never go into this. Why? It's because the Christians don't deal with the true narrative of the Bible. You see, they deal with a false narrative where they, they've painted the most high in this light of dealing with all nations and the most high bringing all nations up under the covenant. And that's not, that's not going to be the case. And that's going to be a, probably another series, man, going into the, uh, uh, another video, going into the covenant, man, showing that the covenant is only for the nation of Israel. You see? But this is Baruch chapter 2, and I'll wrap it up after this, man, because this, this just hits it home. This is Baruch chapter 2, verse 27. It says what? O Lord, our, O Yahweh, our power, thou hast dealt with us after all thy goodness and according to all thy great mercy of thine. As thou spakest by thy servant Moses in the day when thou didst command him to write the law before the children of Israel, saying, If you will not hear my voice, 
surely this very great multitude shall be turned into a small number among the nations while I will scatter them. And we just read that in Leviticus 26. And you can also read the same thing in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. The Most High promises that he was going to scatter us amongst all nations if we broke his covenant. If we didn't take heed to his words. And that's exactly what happened. And this is why we find ourselves as Israelites in the land of America and scattered all throughout the world in these different lands of the heathen, man. And not in our homeland, the land that the Most High promised unto our fathers. That's why we're not there, because of our disobedience. Verse 30 says what, though? For I knew that they would not hear me, because it is a stiff-necked people. But in the land of their captivities, they shall remember themselves. You see, and we're fulfilling that prophecy. Because we're waking up to the fact that we're the Israelites. We have been awakened to the fact that the Heavenly Father is our God and He's our God only. We've, we've been waking up to the fact that the one you ignorantly call Jesus Christ, He didn't come for all nations. He came to save the nation of Israel from their sins. You see, as it is written. This is what's happening, man. We're fulfilling prophecy. Just as the Most High spoke. Just as the Most High promised. 31 goes on to say what? And shall know that I am Yahweh their God, for I will give them a heart and ears to hear. And what is that going into? That goes into us receiving of the Holy Spirit to understand these things now. You see? 32 says what? And they shall praise me in the land of their captivity and think upon my name. And this, I'm, I'm doing that right now. I'm praising the Lord right now by doing this video. You see? We, hey, I'm thinking upon the Most High's name right now by going into the history. Going back into the things that the Most High promised unto our forefathers, man. Breaking it down the correct way. Open up the video with doing what? Giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shah. This is what the Israelites will be doing. And we're the only nation that's doing this. Why? Because we are the Israelites. This ain't no coincidence, man. We are doing this because the Most High said we would be doing this in the last day. <laughs> now verse 33 says what? And return from their stiff neck and from their wicked deeds. We, we, we will be in the state of repenting. It says what? For they shall remember the way of their fathers with sin before Yahweh. Now listen to this. Verse 34 says what? And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath. Unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And that's what we've been going through in this whole series, man. That oath that the Most High made unto our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he's promising right here in Baruch chapter 2, verse 34, that he's going to bring us into the land that he promised unto our forefathers once again, man. You see? This has to be fulfilled. This has not come to pass yet, man. You see, why ain't the Christians talking about this, man? Why aren't they giving you a proper uh, understanding of what's written in the scriptures? Because it's right here. You see? You know why? Because these Christian pastors have been set up to lie to you. To keep you in a dumbed down state, man. To keep you from understanding of who, who you truly are. And what you're supposed to be doing here on this earth. You see? So, Baruch 2 and 34... And I will bring them again into the land which I promised with an oath unto their fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they shall be lords of it. And I will increase them. And they shall not, and they shall not be diminished. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, which is the second covenant. And that covenant is only going to be made between the Most High and the Israelites. Just as the first covenant. You see, that's another cut to you Christians. You are not going to be up under the second covenant. That covenant is only for the nation of Israel, man. As we are reading. You see? Baruch 2 and 35. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them to be their God, and they shall be my people. And I will no more drive my people of Israel out of the land that I have given them. And that fulfills the promise of what? Us inheriting that land forevermore. Which has not taken place yet. This still has to happen. And in the next in the next part, we're gonna go into more prophecies of the most high saying the same things through the through the mouth of different prophets, man. To show you that this is the true narrative of the Holy Bible, man. 
not that bullshit that they that they that they've been teaching for all these centuries in that Christian church, man. You see? Hey, so with, so with that, man, I'm gonna give all praise, all honor, all glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham Rakakwadash. A hey, double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone for teaching me this truth according to the Bible through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah and a sincere peace and salutation to all you hopeful to let Akim out there pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, doing the work as Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah has created us to do. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Wa, and Baba Ba.